And we are continuing onward to the Tree of Thorns. I love Splash, their splash, designs. splash. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's That's funny. Splashy. We were both right on that. Yeah. <laughs> you in two different ways. Yeah. Oh, we get the map now. Map of Lemuria is available, allowing rapid travel. Okay. Lemuria has that very, I think, uh, name syndrome, fantasy name syndrome yeah. kind of sound to it. Uh, what was that movie? Um, oh, I don't know what you're referring to. Oh, you don't? Um, oh, dude, man. This is a very vague reference Ho- point that you're jumping off Oh, of. holy crap, surveillance does. does oh, that... yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, my holy yes. crap, surveillance uh, Gentlemen does. Broncos. Yes, yeah. If you haven't watched Gentlemen Broncos, you know, it's, it, is a, it is a wonderful treat. Um, uh, what's, what's the actor's name? Uh, played Zay Fabio of Rocks, played on the moon. Yeah. Um, um, Sam Rockwell. Sam, yep, there you go, yeah. <laughs> that guy is incredible in he that really role. Is, yeah. It's, you know, take your sci fi book covers and your bad sci fi writing and just put it into screen with one of the greatest actors. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just really, really a treat. Yeah. It's sad, his performance in Iron Man 3. I think Iron Man 3 was just a boring Wait, well, Iron Man 2, was right? he? Yeah, he was Iron, Iron Man 2. 2. I'm sorry. Yes. Should we fight this griffin? Because we haven't fought a griffin yet? Sure, go ahead. All right. You can get behind it. Um, I, I kind of loathe Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3. Yeah. They're... The only scene I love out of Iron Man 3, and it was totally worth it, was the PTSD scene where he's remembering the Avengers. Um, oh, yes. It showed yes. a real level of character development that you don't get very often in... Uh... Well, anything, any of Robert Downey Jr.'s parts in both those movies are good, um, but the overall movie is just... It's like, they have weak villains, and they're, the villains are poorly written. It's, it's such a, like... Oh, man, that was terrible. Countering magical attack, too. All right. So no magic on the Griffin would be a good yeah. idea from here on out. <laughs> um... But yeah, it, it's... Oh, ouch. Um, it's tough, because you know he's a great actor, Sam Rockwell. Mm-hmm. Moon is one of the best science fiction films. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's in, it's in a, I don't know, what, like a top 15 for me? <laughs> oh, um, okay, easily. Yeah, okay. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm ready to claim top 10, but it's in a top 15. And... Um, Ooh. Did you know that okay. Moon was written and directed by David Bowie's son? I did not know that. That's yeah. good information. Uh, collector. Oh, no, that's you. Behold um, my, my trove of uh, <laughs> extra trivia. Yeah, no, it's it's excellent. Um, but anyhow, you, you've seen him in those roles. You know he's good. And then to watch him in Iron Man 2, where they just gave him nothing. It's yeah. depressing. He was almost a non-character. I mean, yeah. It was... Uh, he, he, villains. This is a uh, going into a larger topic. Villains in hero movies, uh, villains in general, are something that are, I think, are the most important thing to write well in a story. Yes. You could have a boring hero and make them very interesting because of how interesting the villain is. Look at the Dark Knight. Yeah. Um, Batman didn't really have that much interesting going on in the Dark Knight. He was brooding. Uh, he was upset about um, Maggie Gyllenhaal's character. I can't remember her. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a but solid example, though. You're right. Those were his main character contributions. Um, you know, his the, the story. But uh, him being foiled by the Joker, uh, not not foiled. In the, I understand. But yeah. in the, in the, in the I, character and, sense. Uh, writing foil, yes. Yeah. It, it, I mean, and they are one of the best, you know, pairs of foils in, yes. in writing history. Um, it's what made it so good. But when you think of a movie like X-Men First Class. Yeah. You want to stun that spider that's sure. rearing up at me? Uh, do we fight it or do we move on? I think on? we can keep on going. Okay. We'll have plenty of fights in this game. Um, X Men First Class. I really enjoyed the writing of Magneto and um, uh, Picard. We'll say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, Charles Picard, <laughs> Charles Xavier, Picard Xavier of the Xavier. USS Academy of X Men. <laughs> uh, but the the Hellfire Club in that uh, their 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 lead villain and Kevin Bacon. Uh, had absolutely no motivations. Kevin Bacon was just evil for evil's sake. Yeah. Um, and it, it felt very upsetting. Uh, I really wanted to um, get a sense of... Uh... It applies... Oh, we, we have some of these gems now. Should we go into a crafting menu real quick? Oh, that seems worth a look. Um, did I start a timer on this episode? I didn't. <laughs> we, nice. we are so bad at that. And are you recording the video? Um... Oh, we're definitely recording. We got okay. recording on audio and video, but we did not start a timer. So uh, I'll just pay attention to it on the audio track, and when we get over 10, we'll know we're okay. But let's take a minute to uh, to deal with some oculi. 
Um, the the latest X Men movie had a similar problem. What Future was? Past? Yeah. Um, I liked it a little bit more though for other reasons. Yeah, but there, there was less of a, a clear villain. Um, it was the 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 relationship between um, Charles Picard and uh, Robot Magneto. I say robot because of uh, what's it called? That that movie that everyone hated. Um, he was, he was a droid. Oh, oh, Prometheus. Prometheus. Well, that's Dude, another topic. We can jump on that I could go into that but, one. Um, oh, so But the angry. relationship between um, Xavier and Magneto in Days of Future Past at least had enough tension to it that it could, you know, Magneto, uh, spoiler territory, um, you know, he's, he's a villain in the X-Men universe, and that was a driving tension, even though there was another villain in, um, a semi-villain in, uh, oh man, I almost should say that, a semi-villain in, uh, Tyrion's uh, character, um, uh, Peter Dinklage. Peter yeah. Dinklage. Thank you. Thank you. Which I, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna bring him up as. Oh, do I have four of those green wow. ones? <laughs> oh, well, While cool. you're wrapped up in this, I think so. Yeah, uh, he he didn't have a lot of villainous attitude. I think what was neat though is that we got to see him pre-villain. Like we were solving the problem pre-villain, and so the the kind of the heroic point of the movie was, you know. But he was a bigot, right off. I mean, he wasn't pre-villain really. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think we saw that there was room in him. Like, he genuinely cared. Um, there, there was... He had more humanizing elements than Kevin Bacon did. Okay. I'll um, give you that. But I still feel like he wasn't the best handled character, given... Sure. We should fight this, because we've never fallen on these before. Um, but they did other things that helped the villains out in that movie. They started off with the, the, the consequences of the future. Um, mm -hmm. the, the great scene with the, the super-evolved Sentinels where we got to see some mutants die. Oh, yeah. Don't, and that gave a sense of threat. That, don't get me wrong. The visuals were amazing, but that movie was definitely selling itself on visuals and very little more than that, which most superhero movies do. So it's not like I'm not okay with that. I just feel like I want a bigger, better villain. And, and you haven't seen the latest Avengers, but I feel similarly about that. The latest Avengers has kind of the same issue. I want... More bigger, better villains. Who are you blocking? You're blocking, I'm blocking this, guy? this guy. I don't think you're gonna be like, oh, no, he did. The tumble is super fast. Yeah, I'll just keep on going for him. Um, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I, and I think that's kind of the clear line where superhero movies become um, really fun, really great, or generally bad. Oh, I missed it. He went really fast. It's okay. It's all um, right. You know, because you can look at a lot of the movies. It's easier, I think, Spiral for superhero movies. writers, film writers. They're they're serving, uh, you know, a big distributor's agenda of selling, selling tickets for a popcorn movie. Yeah. Um, but when someone does try to write a superhero movie good, it's it's a challenge. You know, you're not only you're trying to please the comic book fans, but you're also trying to write a story that fits in a two-hour period. Um, yeah. So, I'm trying to think, what are, some, what are some other movies that maybe reached well but didn't quite get there? Yeah, um, reached well but didn't get there for superheroes specifically. Yeah, uh, Hancock. Oh yeah, it yeah. tried. I, I don't think it succeeded. Um, you know, it had a lot of great, like the anti-hero superhero is a wonderful idea. Oh, um, Push actually is another one. Yeah. That I really liked the setup for, but the execution felt like it was just shy. Yeah. Um, I hesitate to say Jumper. I, I hated a lot of what was going on in Jumper, but the, the mythology they set up was kind of interesting. Yeah, I'll give it that. Um, Plus, didn't that have young Charles Professor Xavier? No, that was, that was even better. That was Hayden Christensen, voice of a oh, new generation of Star was, Wars fans. Oh, was it was it Wanted? Yeah, yeah. Had, yeah Jumper was, was the, the teleporting one. Yeah, where Wanted the, was, was these... the curve of the bullets. I was getting them confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Which I still think that was interesting, though. Um... Yeah. I, I did not like Wanted. Um, um, I couldn't get past Kirby Bullets. I was okay with it, but I was also... Um, uh, I was just, I, I think it's funny that Xavier was in both of them because they're both kind of comic book movie, you know. Yeah. The, the young guy who played him. You know. um, not Picard. <laughs> Which, by the way, I know the internet has very well delved into this territory, but... Um, the aging of Picard over the course of what, like, eighteen years or something, where he goes from that actor to I, I, I've realized we've been calling him Picard this entire time. <laughs> we are smart enough to know the difference between the characters, but 
Xavier in the X-Men movies from X-Men 1 to the Days of Future Past timeline. Like, I can't remember what... It's like 20 years or something. But he becomes a completely, like, withered old man in that <laughs> time frame. Um, I can't remember which movie it is, but there's one where we see, like, a de-aged... Uh, yeah, yeah. That, I really didn't like that, actually. It looked terrible. Was it X-Men 2? Was it X-Men 3? I can't remember it, what it, was. it it might have um, been three because that might have been when they went back and did Phoenix getting like first. Or it was Jean Grey getting first introduced to the or Academy. Or it was Wolverine Origins. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, I think it was X Men Three. Okay. I think it was when the Phoenix story was going on. They showed Jean's history, Jean yeah. Grey. Another oh man. We're we're deep in reference territory here, so hopefully comic book nerds are watching. Otherwise, <laughs> we've bored everybody to death. Um, I expect that, you know, with the vast majority of crossover, for the kind of person who would watch this, we are hitting comic book nerds, but we might have gone a little too deep. We came up here and we killed the big thing. Is there yeah, anything else saw, to kill? it was a mini-boss. Okay. So nowhere else to go from here, though? Just no, this is just a little boss perch. Okay. Boss perch. I like it. All right. Um, and, uh, with that, I would say we will continue exploring the Tree of Thorns. And perhaps Prometheus. Oh, God. God, I have so much I can say about Prometheus. Yeah, I, I kind of want to talk about because I have a lot of defenses I like to make for that movie, um, even in the grand scheme of it being pretty bad. But we'll get there. We're not brothers anymore. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying um, the falling apart of a real family.